So, uh, and next thing is, what is the magnitude of frictional force? I, I said, uh, the type of the material is important, but if, for example, this has a friction, and when I throw this object on the surface horizontally, after a while, this, the object, the uh, bottle, will stop because of the frictional force, of course. But if I increase its weight, or if I put more water on it, will the friction force will be the same or different? different? It will be different because the frictional force also depends on the normal force between two surfaces, between the surface of bottle and the uh, uh, table. So the frictional force is proportional to the normal force. But this does not mean that the frictional force is in the direction of normal force. In fact, they are uh, exactly uh, perpendicular to each other. But the magnitude of the frictional force is proportional to the magnitude of the normal force. There are two kinds of frictional force. Uh, one is called static frictional force, and the other is a kinetic frictional force. Before that, I should uh, express the frictional force in terms of the normal force as like this. Let's denote all frictional forces like Fk, okay? Or, sorry, Fs. Or Ff, okay. So. Because Fs stands for static friction force and Fk is for kinetic friction. If this is a frictional force, this is proportional to the normal force with a proportionality constant we call mu. This is the coefficient of friction, okay? As I said, the magnitude of frictional force is proportional to the normal force, and this proportionality constant is nothing but the coefficient of friction. And this coefficient of friction, we have two types, two different types of coefficient of friction for surfaces. If the object is in motion, we have different coefficient that we call mu k, the coefficient of kinetic friction. If the object stands still, no motion, then we have another a coefficient, mu s, which is called coefficient of static friction. And uh, these are different because when the surfaces are in motion, their chemical interaction is different than they are in uh, standing uh, rest, right? İki farklı sürtünme kat sayısının var olmasının sebebi hareket ederken hareket ederken yüzeyler arasındaki e, sürtünme duruyorken ki sürtünmeden daha farklı. Neden? Çünkü hareket ederken yüzeyler arasındaki moleküler interaksiyonlar, moleküler şeyler daha az. Çünkü hareket ediyor değil mi? Yani moleküllerin birbirleriyle işte parçacıkların e, şey interaksiyonu daha az. Ama dururken bu interaksiyon daha fazla. Hatta eğer yüzeyler çok uzun süre birbirlerinle e, duruyor halde e, iseler bir süre sonra yapış, yapışırlar. Niye? Aralarındaki e, moleküllerin e, kimyasal interaksiyonları bir süre sonra e, değişmez hale gelir ve yapışır. So anyway, we have always mu s, the static frictional force is larger than mu k. Okay? That's for some atomic reasons, atomic uh, theory reasons. And in problems, if the object in question is moving, and if there is friction, you will always use the kinetic friction coefficient. If the problem in the problems, the object in question is standing still, it's not moving, then again, uh, we have a frictional force, but this time you will use the static frictional coefficient, okay? So it is enough for you to uh, know this. 
let's think about an example. Okay. Suppose you have this lot on the uh, back side of a truck, and this damper is moving up and down by tilting the surface of the lot. Okay. So you can always change the elevation angle uh, from the track. So the question is, of course, there is a friction, kind of friction. Initially, if the load is not moving, there is a static frictional force between the load and the track, right? Back, back uh, surface of the track. And we want to find the static frictional force, the coefficient of the static frictional force, that is mu s. Okay? We, we want to find mu s of the surfaces of the load and the back side of the track. So how do we do it? For this, for this, we tilt, the truck driver tilts the back side by increasing this angle, okay? Initially, there will be no motion of the load on the track because there is an angle, there are obviously forces which act uh, down to the load but you see there is no motion. Why? Because the friction, there is a frictional force, right? And you can always uh, test this at home. You tilt a, a surface and put a, some object on it. Until you come at a certain angle, the object will not slide down, right? But when you come, when you tilt, when you increase this angle to a specific value, to a largest value, you will observe the load will start to slide down. Because the weight of the load, the horizontal component of the, weight, uh, of the load, will overcome the frictional force. When that happens, the object load will start sliding down. Anlaşılıyor mu? Türkçe anlatıyorum. Uh, I'm explaining the same thing in Turkish. Okay. No problem. Uh, şimdi bir burada bu problemde arkadaş bu çok önemli bir problem. Biz herhangi iki yüzey arasındaki statik e, sürtünme katsayısını bulmaya çalışıyoruz. Bunun için yüzeyi e, işte buradaki görüntüde gibi bir load koyuyorsunuz, bir yük ve yüzeyin e, eğimini yavaş yavaş artırıyoruz. İlk başta aşağı doğru bir kayma olmayacak. Niye? Çünkü e, sürtünme kuvveti e, çok kuvvetli. Bu açıyı artırdıkça belli bir değere geldiğinde yüke etkiyen paralel yöndeki kuvvet çünkü hatırlarsanız mg sinüs tetaydı değil mi? Evet. mg sinüs teta. Tetayı artırdıkça sinüs artıyor mu? Artıyor. O kuvvet arttıkça Belli bir değere gelecek o kuvvet. O kuvvet e, kütlenin aşağı doğru kaymasını önleyen sürtünme kuvvetini ne eşit veya ondan daha fazla olduğu anda kaymaya başlayacak. Fakat biz bu maksimum e, açıyı bu yavaş yavaş e, yüzeyi e, kaldırarak bulabiliriz. Değil mi? Yavaş yavaş kamyon e, şoförü bunu kaldırıyor. Tam Tam kaymanın olduğu noktada yavaş yavaş kaldırdığı için o açıyı biz hemen tespit edebiliriz. Doğru mu? Güzel. So when right at the moment the load starts to slide down. Record this angle. Theta zero. Let's say. Okay. And we will write down now, at this instant, the equations of motion for the load. And for the x direction, and the x direction is always the parallel uh, direction to the surface. As you see, this is your coordinate system again, okay? This type of questions, if you uh, are analyzing the object on the surface, then always they take uh, the surface as the x direction, okay? So, what is the forces acting on the lot on the extraction? Let's write them. There is one frictional force, of course, which will prevent the lot to go down. So that's why the frictional force will be in this direction, okay? Because 
the static frictional force is always in the direction that opposes to the motion of the object. Okay? If the object tends to move down, then the direction of the frictional force will be in the opposite direction. So with this choice of coordinate system, if you choose the x as downward, fs, the frictional force, will be minus. Okay? So you put minus fs. Why I put s? Because it is the static frictional force. But on the other hand, we have the component of the weight in the horizontal direction, which is mg sine theta, that we already have solved this type of question in the previous problems, you know. This is mg sine theta. It is plus because it is in the direction of downward, and downward I have already chosen as the plus x direction. All right. This is will be equal to zero right when at the time when the object starts sliding at a constant speed. Okay. Tam e, kütle aşağı doğru kayma ile kayma arasında o noktayı da a'yı sıfır alabilirsiniz. Kaysa bile ivme sabit bir hızla kayacak, tamam? So when just before starts the load this its motion you can take a is equal to zero so what you have you have the frictional static frictional force times this uh, mg sine equal to zero and this will be equal to zero but <coughs> what is the static frictional force as i said the frictional force is always the normal force times the coefficient of static friction mu s okay but right at this angle, what is normal force? That we already know from the previous examples. And the normal force is nothing but mg cosine theta. Doğru mu? The normal force, the normal force, okay, mg cosine theta. Because I have to calculate the normal force now. I have to calculate the normal force because the frictional force is dependent on the normal force. And the normal force is mg cosine theta. mg cosine theta, you can solve uh, this by using the Newton's second law in the y direction. Again, for this type of motion, since the motion takes place on the x direction, there is no motion in the y direction. You can always write down the Newton's second law for the y direction. And this is equal to zero because a y is equal to zero. But the forces in the uh, vertical direction is minus mg cosine theta, the normal force, sorry, the weight of the uh, component of the weight of the object, plus the normal force. And this is equal to zero. The normal force is mg cosine theta. For inclined surfaces, the normal force is always mg cosine theta. And the horizontal component of the force is always mg sine theta. Since you already know now what the normal force is from the second equation, you can solve this first equation. If you put n is equal to mg cosine theta, then you can solve for mu s, okay? Here, instead of n here, we have mg cosine theta, and we have equal to zero. If you solve for mu s, you will find mu s is equal to mg sine theta, divided by mg cosine theta and on the both numerator and denominator mg cancels out and you have mu s is equal to tangent theta okay so the problem says this sliding down happens when right angle is at equal to 23.2 and this tangent of this angle is nothing but the coefficient of static friction. This is very interesting because this coefficient neither depends on g nor the mass of the object. Mass doesn't uh, contribute to the mu s. Even if you put one ton of the same load having the same surfaces or one kilogram, you have the same coefficient of static friction.
Okay, in most of the problems, you will be provided that the, this uh, coefficient of friction, frictions, but uh, sometimes you have to determine this coefficient by uh, using these type of equations, okay? So again, uh, we have another type of uh, friction force, which is kinetic friction. This is the same in format mu k times the normal force, but this mu k is now different than the coefficient of static friction. But it is most of the time given in the problems. So I'm skipping these parts and let's do an example. So the example is, we have this salt box on the surface of a table and you throw this salt box with an initial velocity, okay? The, th the, the box, the salt, will move by decreasing its speed and eventually it will stop because there is a friction, right? There is a friction between the salt and the surface of table. So the problem is, we have to find this frictional coefficient, the kinetic frictional coefficient. This time, since the object is moving, we have to find not the static frictional coefficient, but the kinetic frictional coefficient. But how do we, how do we find it? The problem says, the salt box has a, a mass of 50 grams, and initially, we throw the salt box with a, a velocity of 1.50 meter per second. And the salt box stops after it takes a distance of 84 centimeters. So with these given values, can we find mu k? Okay. So again, <coughs> what you do is... Uh, if you want to find mu k, then if the object stops, it must have a constant deceleration, right? If the object stops, it has some deceleration or negative acceleration. And we know from the Newton's second law, the mass times acceleration is equal to force. And the force in question in this problem is frictional force. It is the kinetic frictional force that stops the motion of the salt box. If you ask why the salt box stops, because during its motion, there is one force on the horizontal direction, which is the frictional force. This force stops, decreases its speed, eventually it stops. So I can always equate this force because it's force to mass times the acceleration. So if I can find the force of friction, I can find the coefficient of friction, right? Because the force of friction is nothing but equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And the normal force in this question is m times g because the normal force between the salt box and the table is nothing but the weight of the salt, because the, parallel, the surface is parallel and the normal force is mg. <coughs> so when you draw the free body diagram of this motion of the salt box, you will have uh, the frictional force which, move, which, which is the uh, opposite to the uh, direction of its motion in the horizontal direction and there are no any other forces on the horizontal direction, no force. just the frictional force. In the vertical direction, we have the normal force, which is upward, and the weight, mg, which is downward. This is the free body diagram. So once you put this diagram, you are ready to calculate. So what are all the forces acting on the object in the x-direction? There, as I said, there is only one force during the motion, which is the frictional force, and this force is opposing the motion of the box, and then I take this 
as minus. Okay? Minus mu k times n. This is the frictional force that stops, that causes the uh, uh, stopping the uh, uh, salt box on the table. And according to the Newton's second law, this must be equal to the mass of the salt box times the acceleration. If I had known the acceleration of this motion, I would calculate the frictional force. But the thing is, I don't know the acceleration. But can I find the acceleration with the given in the problem? Yes. Because I, I know the final velocity of the box, it is zero. I know the initial velocity of the box, it is given 1.15. And I know the stopping distance. Remember, we had the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the stopping distance times the acceleration. By solving this equation from the one-dimensional dynamics, okay, you can find Ax as minus v0 squared divided by 2d. And d is the stopping distance, and it is given in the problem. It is 84 centimeters. And solving this, you can find the acceleration, the uh, stopping acceleration of the box as minus 0 0.79 meter per second squared. Once you know this, you can solve for mu k in the first equation. And mu k is nothing but minus m times ax divided by the normal force. And the normal force is nothing but mg, right? Normal force is easy. So m times ax divided by m times g, if you solve this, you can uh, put everything in here. You can have 1.15 on the top. We have on down 2 times 9.8 with g, and we have the stopping distance, etc. Plug all the uh, noun values, given values in the problem, to find mu k, and mu k is 0 0.08. There is no any dimension. Mu k is not centimeters, not meters, not kilograms, not newtons. Mu k, the static, uh, the static or kinetic friction for, is unitless. There is no dimension. It's just a constant. All right. Any questions for this? So, uh, again, anyway, you can check uh, at home. I will put this uh, notes uh, on the web page today. So, there is another problem. In fact, it is the same, exactly the same kind of problem. Uh, it is the ice hockey. You know, this ball of the ice hockey is known as pluck. Sorry, puck. Hockey puck. And... Uh, Often, this puck is hit by uh, the athletes in the game. And when you hit the puck, of course, what you do is you give an initial velocity to the puck, okay? A kick. And initial speed of the puck is given. And the puck is moving on the surface, ice surface. Even the surface is ice, there is always a friction, but this friction force, uh, the frictional coefficient is, will be the, this very small, and you will calculate it, in fact. So the initial speed is given, and the puck slides 1.2, uh, 120 meters before it stops. Just like in the previous question, in the previous question we throw the uh, salt box, and it goes 84 centimeters on the surface. This time, this plug is hit with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second, and it's, it, is, it travels a distance of 120, one, uh, 120 meters uh, distance, uh, and it stops. So again, you can calculate the acceleration. It, the acceleration will be negative, right? And you do the same trick, just like in the previous problem. I recommend you to solve uh, first yourself without looking at the solution and going through the same steps as in the previous problem and with this you can find at the end mu k the static uh, sorry the kinetic frictional coefficient so it's the same type of problem that's it I mean just you find first the acceleration and by using the Newton's second law the force of friction will be equal to m times the acceleration from this you can find Mickey.
we have uh, a little more complicated problem next. This chapter go, will go always uh, by solving problems, okay? There are, there are no any uh, fundamental theories because we know already the laws of motion from, from the previous chapter. So we will just apply these laws of motion to the problems. So we have these two masses again. They are connected by a string. It is not stretching or expanding. It stays the same length all the time. But the difference is in here, M1 is on the surface and the surface has friction. Okay? And M2 is since it is up in the air, there is no friction for M2. Only forces of uh, uh, M2 are the weight downward and the tension force on the core. So we choose again this coordinate system, okay? For both masses, it's the same coordinate system. And after fixing the coordinate system, you, what you do is you draw free body diagram for each mass. This is very important. Without knowing the forces acting on the bodies, you cannot solve the problem, okay? So for mass one, there is always gravity downward, and there is, since it is in contact with the surface, a normal force which is upward. There is a force of string pulling it toward right in the positive x direction, tension. And we have one more force, the frictional force, which will be in the opposite direction to the tension. Because tension will tend to move the mass toward in the positive x direction, as I already said, the frictional forces are always in the direction that opposes the tendency of the motion. Okay? If the mass will go in one direction or will tend to move in one direction, the force of friction will be just opposite to that direction. So that's why we take the force of friction in opposite direction to the tension. And, of course, you do the same uh, for mass M2. Mass M2 has these only two forces acting upward, which is the tension in the core. It's the same tension in here. And downward Mg, M2G. Well, I think everything is given in the problem. The masses are given. Uh, the kinetic friction is given. And the problem is find the acceleration and the tension in the string. So let's do it. Start with the first mass. If you start with the first mass, you will write down uh, all the forces on mass 1 in the first x direction and then y direction. So in the first direction, in x direction, we have, according to Newton's second law, a mass of uh, first body, mass 1 times ax. And the forces, when it comes to forces, 1 will be the minus Fk, the kinetic frictional force. We take it minus because it is in the negative x direction. And the mass tends to move in the positive x direction. That's why we take it minus. And T is plus, of course, because T is pulling the M M1 actually. So this will be equal to M times M1 times Ax. And we know Fk is the frictional uh, coefficient, mu k times the normal force. How do you find the normal force? By using the Newton's second law in the y direction. In the y direction, there is no motion of m1. It is, uh, acceleration is zero. But there are four forces on the y direction. One is downward, minus mg, m1g, and the upward, uh, n. And this will be equal to zero. So immediately, you will find from here, the n, the normal force, is equal to m1 times g. So you can solve the equation 1 for Ax, right, for Ax, uh, in terms of the normal force, tension, and M1. So in terms of this, is we have minus mu k n, and instead of n, you can always write M1g, and we have tension t, and denominator, we have M1. So this is the expression for Ax the acceleration of M1. But this acceleration will be the same for M2 because they are connected, right? And let's 
do uh, Newton's second law uh, solve uh, the equations for the Newton's second law for the mass m2. In y direction, we have the forces upward t and minus m2g, and this will be equal to m2 times ay. But we know ay must be minus ax, or ax is minus ay with this choice of coordinate system, right? Because M2 is, while M1 is going in the positive x direction, acceleration is plus, M2 will go down in the negative y direction. So that's why these accelerations are, uh, they are having different, different signs. One is plus, the other is minus. So you have expression for ay, from the Newton's second law for mass m2 and since these ay and ax are, are related to each other by this equation ax is equal to minus ay you can equate these two expressions t minus mu k m1 g divided by m1 to t minus m2 g divided by m2 so when you do this equation and solve for t because there is no there is only one unknown now with these equations there is only t unknown. M2 is given, g is given, mu k is given. So you can solve for t. When you solve for t, you get this expression for t. M1 times M2 g, mu k, the force of kinetic friction, plus 1 divided by the total mass. Remember, we had the same problem from the uh, previous lecture. We had T tension when there is no friction, M1 times G, M1 times M2 times G, and we had this two factor of two divided by the total mass. When there is a friction, then this tension in the T is modified by this. We have mu k. So when you put all the numerical values, you can find the tension T as 32. 32.4 newtons and once you know T you can solve for A because T and A's are related to each other by this equation and AY and AX are just they are having opposite signs and you will find the acceleration as 5.17 meter per second square okay so do we have any questions for this if not, I will pass to the uh, last example. And this is by far the most maybe difficult problem for you because we have two masses. The smaller one is on top of the larger one. And the question says, says, the larger mass, the mass uh, on down, is pulled by a string, right? And there is no friction between the larger mass and the surface. But there is friction between the smaller mass and the larger mass. Okay? So... Uh, what is the question? Question is, what minimum, what maximum force when you pull the larger mass with the string? What maximum force can be exerted by the string on 10 kilogram block without causing the smaller mass slipping on top of the larger mass? Okay. Let me explain this in Turkish. It's the same thing. İki kütle büyük olan e, yüzeyle temasın, e, teması olan e, e, sürtünmesiz bir yüzeyde gidiyor. Fakat onun üstüne konulan küçük kütle sürtünmeli. Şimdi e, alttaki kütleyi hızla çekerseniz he, üstteki kütlenin bir kayma durumu var. Kayabilir. E, küçük kuvvetlerde çekerseniz kaymaz. 
ne, ne, neden kaymaz? Çünkü sürtünme kuvveti var. Ama siz e, belli bir kuvvetin üstünde çekerseniz bu kayma olacak. Belli bir maksimum maksimum çekme kuvveti var. Tek o maksimum çekme kuvvetinin üstündeki kuvvetlerde çekerseniz kayma olacak. Çekmezseniz kayma olmayacak. What is this maximum T? That's the question. First of all, this will depend on the mass, small mass, right? The contact force, the normal force between mass and, and, and smaller mass and larger mass. So if you have no idea, okay, if you have no idea how to solve this problem, you can always start with the free body diagram, okay? If you can show all the forces on each mass correctly, then you don't uh, you don't worry about nothing. Okay. So uh, again, I am stressing out expression is very clearly that if you can draw the free body diagram correctly, most of the problem is solved. The rest is just write down the equations. That's it. If you can put the forces uh, correctly, then nothing else matter. Okay? This is just apply the equations in X and Y. So, if you think the free body diagram for the larger mass, you see there are many forces in here. Well, one force will be always downward, which is gravity. Okay? And since, uh, because of this uh, weight of uh, large mass, there will be a contact force between the larger mass and the surface. This contact force is N2, okay? And it is up. All right. What about the other forces in the vertical direction? There will be another contact force uh, between the larger mass and the smaller mass. Okay. Whenever there is two surfaces are in contact with each other, there is always a contact force. We have two different surfaces in this question, which is in contact with each other. One is the larger mass and the table, and the other uh, surface is the smaller mass and the larger mass. Okay. But the contact force between the smaller mass and the larger mass. If you think the larger mass in the perspective of larger mass, this contact force will push on the larger mass, right? The contact force between small mass and large mass will push the large mass down. So that contact force must be down, N1. And of course, there is always frictional force on M, larger mass, M, because of the friction between the two surfaces and little M and large mass. So these are all the forces acting on the large mass only. Okay? So we draw the free body diagrams one by one, and this is the first free body diagram. Next, you think only, only the small mass. Okay, small m, there's always a normal uh, the weight of the mass m downward, mg, small mg. And the contact force between the small mass m and the large mass, okay? Now, there is no any contact force between the small mass and the surface of table. Because the small mass do not touch the surface of the table. It touches the surface of larger mass. So that's why we have this N1 normal force which is up because uh, large mass, the contact mass, the force of M is pushing it up. Anyway, there is another force, frictional force acting on the small mass. But be careful in here. 
if small mass is moving toward right, when you pull this rope toward right, the force of friction must be, the force of friction on the small mass M must be in the same direction of the T. Right? Because if small mass, when you pull the rope toward right, is moving to the right, then there will be net force toward right. And this force is the only force, the force of friction between small mass and large mass, and this will be in the positive x direction. But remember, this same frictional force acts on the opposite direction for the larger mass, okay? This force is preventing the motion of the larger mass, larger mass. The same frictional force causes the small mass going toward in the right direction, okay? So these are uh, the free body diagram, all forces, but and drawing these forces in this type of question is not very easy, okay? So try to understand this, and there are, I will put other examples, solve problems uh, on the web page today, just check it. So the next thing is, in fact, is the easy part. The next thing is just apply the Newton's second law for each mass, for the large mass, Fx, the total, total forces on the x direction is T, tension, in the rope it is in the positive x direction. That's why we take class. And minus Fs, the static frictional force. Because why do we use the static frictional force? The large mass is moving. But the small mass, M, is not moving. It stays at rest in compared to the larger mass. That's why we take the static frictional force, not the kinetic frictional force. We're not using the kinetic frictional force. Although the larger mass is moving, but it's moving on the table surface. It's not moving on the small mass surfaces. That's why we take the static frictional force in here. So this will be equal to ma mass times large mass times A. And we know uh, the static frictional force is nothing but the uh, frictional coefficient mu s times small mass m times g. because the static frictional force between small mass and larger mass is the normal force between them, which is small mass m times g, times the uh, coefficient of friction. So this is the first equation. And if you write down the Newton circle in the y direction, we have for the larger mass, we have N2, which is upward, N1, which is downward, that's why I put minus N1 and minus Mg because with this choice of corner system M1, Mg is down and this will be equal to zero because in the vertical direction the large mass is not moving. It's only moving in the horizontal direction. So I have two, two equations from the large mass and I can write the Newton's second law for the small mass too for uh, in the x direction we have only the uh, static frictional force that causes the motion of small mass m in the positive x direction and it is nothing but mu s times small mg and this will be equal to m times same acceleration the same acceleration the acceleration of the larger mass because they are both moving with the same acceleration so at least you can find the acceleration of the system and by solving this equation, it is nothing but the frictional coefficient, mu s, times g. <coughs> Next, you can put this a, this a, mu s times g, in the first and second equation. And when you, uh, when you use both these equations and you, you substitute a, mu s times g, you have an equation containing only T, the tension in the cord, 
the uh, coefficient of friction, the masses, and g. So you can solve easily for t, and t will be coefficient of friction times g times the total of masses. And once you plug all the values given in the problem, you can find the maximum tension. The maximum tension in order not to slide the small mass on top of the larger mass will be 51.5 newtons. Okay? So once you find T, the rest is easy. You can find A, and A uh, can be uh, in here, I think. Uh, it is 3.4 meter per second square. In the problem, you don't need to solve for the uh, normal forces, N2 and N1, but uh, as an extra, the problem solves also uh, the values for N1 and N2, the normal forces between masses, larger mass, and the small mass. Okay, so that's it. Um, so these type of questions, as you see, you realize how important to, to be able to draw the free body diagrams correctly. Once you can uh, find the uh, forces correctly, then you can solve the problem. Okay, we stop here and check web page today i will put the solved problems the lecture notes and everything